Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions and we are here today to mass make um, some of the scrapbooking with me. They're like little fold out booklet um, things. Uh, yeah, I've forgotten the name already and I've only just watched the video. We are up to week number 155 would you believe so for those people who don't know we are doing reruns so we are rerunning week number 55 therefore doing week number 155 so if you are wanting to join along and make some of these um little pockets what you're going to need is i am going to be using some a4 page now um for those people in america the a4 page is very similar to your us letter size um ours is eight point 8.25 I think by 11.69 so very very similar um so I'm just going to be using those now minor principles because obviously that's what I've got most of um you could use scrapbooking paper um you know you could use book page maybe if you've got some of those kind of like coffee table size books things like that you're going to probably want bigger paper so this kind of size um if you were using scrapbook paper I would recommend something thinner than the very thick scrapbooking paper. So this that I've got here, this is 120, I think it is, GSM. So it's thicker than copy paper, but it's not as thick as, you know, kind of like, you know, very thick paper. Um, you may be able to use something like maybe some book pages. So if you wanted to bring book pages in, um, the book pages I'm kind of meaning for the flap, which obviously once we've made one, you'll see kind of what I mean by that. So you could use book page for the flap. Um, again, we're going to be doubling, doubling them over. So it won't really matter too much if your book page is not, you know, not particularly thick because we're going to be gluing them together and they'll be, you know, used doubled over. So that's that. You're going to need some um, scissors. You're going to need either your bone folder or your scissor handles to squish your bits down. If you like to use a scoreboard or something to make your folds, you know, of course you can use that. I don't tend to use things like that. But, you know, if you want to use that type of thing, then you could use that. You're going to need some glue and you may need, um, you know, a glue spreader. If you like to, again, if you like to use things like glue spreaders to actually spread your glue. Again, I like to just use, you know, an old store card and things like that. Um, you may want some distress ink, obviously your blendy tool. And you may want to use some um, sort of things. If you're going to do sort of policy closure envelope closure pieces, you may want to have those. Or additionally, you may like to use these for thumb holes and things. Again, these are optional things. Um, but yeah, you may like to use things like that. Obviously, if you're putting the policy closures on, on, then you may want to have some sort of twine or something to wrap around your policy closures and maybe some brads or something to hold your, um, you know, your circles in. Again, these are all optional things. So, you know, completely up to you how many of these things that you incorporate. But they're just kind of a few suggestions of things that you may or may not want to actually incorporate or include. So let's get kind of cracking and make one or two of these and sort of see what we're doing. So I have got this paper here. This is from my Amaranthine Loveliness kit. Um, it's quite a new kit. These are the background pages. So I'm going to start by using this. So let's move these out of the way so that we can kind of focus in. Now, I have to say these are not the easiest. Well, they're quite easy, but they're quite time consuming. So, you know, the chances are, even in a mass make, we're probably not going to get many made. Um, but that's fine. And in some ways, you know, that's even better for a mass make is to use things that are quite time consuming. So what we're going to do is we fold our page over. Now, as you can see, I've not squished it down or anything. I've literally kind of like squished it on the edges just to get a gauge where roughly my middle is of the page. And that's lengthways. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take each side up. So you're going to take it up just slightly above your center line because you're going to be gluing these two together so you want to kind of have it slightly above your center line so that when they meet together you've got something to overlap it onto to actually glue it down so like that you've just got then a couple of millimeters worth of paper where you can actually glue them together 
So squish those down. Again, this is where you may want to use your scissor handles or your bone folder to actually squish your pieces together. And then you're going to just fold your corners in. So all four corners, you're going to fold in like this. Okay, so again, you could use your bone folder or your scissor handles, or of course, you know, you can just squish them. So those two, and then we've got these two here. Then you're going to take your glue and you're going to glue these little triangles in. Okay, so I am just using a wet glue. Um, I always use Anita's Tacky Glue. That's just the glue that I like best. Um, it's just, you know, very similar to like a PVA type glue that maybe you would have used at school. Absolutely up to you what glue you use. You could probably use a glue stick. I mean, personally, I don't really find glue sticks particularly great. I don't, whoops, don't really trust them or have much faith in them actually staying stuck. Um, but of course, you can use things like, you know, glue stick. I wouldn't personally use a hot glue gun for this stage because sometimes hot glue can be a little bit lumpy bumpy and you're going to then end up with lumpy bumpy, you know, corners here. So personally, I wouldn't use a hot glue gun for this part, even though hot glue, you know, one of my favourite things to use. I personally wouldn't really use it for this particular thing. Right, then what you've got is this weird shaped piece of paper. You're going to fold one of your flaps here in like that. So, oops. Oh, I think we've moved my, do I? No, okay. So we're going to fold that in and then this one is going to come up to meet it here. Okay, so obviously where I've got my triangles now, I need to kind of just neaten up my edges because I've obviously not, not squished that down enough in the first place. Right, then what you're going to do is literally glue your two bits together. So that one and then I do the outer edge on this. So you've got the inner edge and the outer edge glued press that down together like that okay and that's all there is to the base of this or the base basis of this now what you're going to do at this point you're going to fold this over because you're going to want to have this in half so we just fold that down again squish that down like that okay okie dokie right so like that. Now I'm going to take my book page. So this is just normal, you know, as normal as you can get book page. And what I'm going to do is literally take this, I've folded it in, folded it in half already. I'm going to then make it so as it's roughly the right size to be able to poke in to this slot. So cut that down here like that. Okay like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to glue this together because what we want to do is be able to slot it in here and this is going to become like an envelope flap okay so we now go gluing this down you know all we're doing basically is thickening this up so that it's nice and sturdy rather than you know a flimsy piece of book page basically so like that Okay, plenty of glue, holding that all together. And then we're just going to glue that down like that. Okay, like that. And then we just mop the glue out. And then all you're going to do is fold this over to make your flap. So you poke this in here, we're going to glue it in. And then when you bring this over, what you want to do is get a flap going over here like that so it's like a little envelope flap okay so get it the right way up again just decide which way you know which way around you want that so yeah I'm going to have it like that so at this point you can make this look a bit better shape you can just like round the corners you know just to neaten it up so as it looks kind of better like that okay and then we're going to glue this in Across here oops so glue in there like that 
and then you're going to glue that into here. Oops. Now, I know that some people probably um, would prefer to glue this all together before you've glued these sides in. Now, personally, I actually find it easier to glue it in, you know, slide it in once it's kind of been assembled. But I know that, I think it was last time I made these, lots of people said, oh, you could glue that, you know, this in before you glue it down. Oh, I've just dabbed nail varnish on there. Um, and you could, you absolutely could, you know, just use the method that you find suits your style best. Personally, I quite like to glue it in afterwards. I find kind of just sliding it into there, um, you know, kind of works for me. But yeah, just use the method that you like to use best. So again, what we do is then to just marry the two sides up, I'm going to take another sheet and then I'm just going to cut this down. So we go one side like that oops and then the other side like that okay so just take those down oops. like that okay one and then the other one and obviously i mean these don't have to be perfect you know because once you've kind of you know slide it in your wonky edges are not going to be visible because obviously they're going to be slid into here so I'm just going to cut that down like that and that's just going to slide in here like that okay so just glue that down plenty of glue and then just I like to put the glue on the actual edge because that's the bit that's going to be the vulnerable point so you then just take your piece, oops, piece of paper, slide that in like that. Okay, and then just take your glue spreader, spread the glue like that. Okay, and then just again, slice that down here. Oops, like that. And that's it. So, I mean, as you can see, they are sort of time consuming, but they are worth it aren't they because they really do make such a lovely little fold out piece now at this point you can obviously vary yours to kind of suit your you know your own style of how you'd like it but for instance in here what you could have is pockets so we could do like a pocket there and then let me get some more book page Let's just get book page that's all text rather than a kind of mishmash or stuff that doesn't really go so again I like to fold it up so it's you know um, thick and durable so just going to fold that over here one and then the other one here like that oops and just fold that down and then what I'm going to do is just probably take it down about here Obviously, I'm going to tidy these pockets up in a minute. I'm not going to just leave them all raggedy and you know, really scruffy looking. But I'm just trying to get them more or less the same size. So that's why I've kind of done them together. Just so I can roughly get them the same sort of size. So that is those. And then you can put those here. And you've got then a pocket here and a pocket here. So are they roughly the same size? Yeah, they don't look too bad, do they? So just check that they're kind of squared off. Okay. I don't know whether they're a little bit big, but I think they're okay. Just take them down slightly more. One. Two. Yeah, okay. Oh, I think I've made those edges worse now. Sometimes you're better off leaving it, aren't you? Your first first time was actually best okay right so again just glue these together like that okay and again just spread that glue out like that and that one so oops glue around the edges like that okay 
going to snip this little side down because I have not made a good job of that at all. So just tidying up a little bit and then in here like that, one and one like that. And these will be your pockets. Now, obviously, you could put pockets this way up if you want. Or, you know, you don't even have to have pockets. I mean, I actually think these are perfectly lovely, you know, without pockets at all. Or you could... Let me just get some plainish paper. You could put just some journaling space down on here. Or, of course, you could decorate this. You know, completely up to you. I think last time, I'm sure I did do pockets. Um... I have to be honest and say this time I'm not so sure that I'm actually loving the pockets. I maybe prefer them, you know, maybe prefer them actually without, without the pockets at all. Um, you know, that might be quite nice. Or actually now I'm thinking perhaps, perhaps I should have done just a complete page. So for instance here, like that. And then if I fold this side down like that, okay. Oops, perhaps I should have done that as my pocket like that. I think that would look better. So yeah, I'm doing it on the fly now. Just um, trying to find, you know, the method that works best. So what I'm going to do is glue this down. Just because actually I didn't really like the look of those two pockets. I didn't like the join in the middle or anything. I thought they didn't look very good. So... I only watched the video this morning, but I didn't really pay that much attention, I've got to be honest, as to how I did those pockets on the inside. And it's only now that I've come to do it again that I think, well, actually, I don't really like how they look. So I'm now thinking this, I think, is going to look better. Oops. This is going to look better, I think. Who knows? This might look rubbish as well. But, you know, it's quite good to um, modify, isn't it, how you do something. Because just because you've done it once doesn't mean you've necessarily done it the best way. And that's the beauty of these mass making sessions is, you know, rerunning through them. We're actually kind of hopefully perfecting our, our um, methods of making them. So what might not have occurred to us previously, you know, we can then come back and revisit and find maybe better ways of doing things. So I'm thinking, do the pocket like that. I actually much prefer that. So just going to glue this in here. Oops, like that. One, we will just put a little line of glue down the middle. And two, oops. Like that. Okay, take those. Again, just want to get my, my fold lines you know, in the right places. So pop that in like that, glue that down. Okay. Like that. So then what we've got, is obviously a pocket here, a pocket here, a pocket here and a pocket here. And obviously the whole thing is then folding over like that. And then on this side, obviously this is where you can put your policy closure here you could just have it as a complete wrap round so if I just pull in for instance this we could just have a complete wrap around like that so take one of my eyelets let's take a pink one Oops. yep take that one and then you can just Punch my hole, oops, punch my hole through both. So, like that. Mm. Okay, like that. And my eyelet did not do that very well in the centre. It's pretty lopsided, but never mind. I mean, again, all these things, you know, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be good enough, good enough to actually work. You know, as long as they look okay, no one's going to be really judging how, you know, how centrally you've got that. And once you've decorated this up and it's inside a journal, you know, there's so much going on in the journal, you're really not going to be noticing, you know, whether that's a fraction over to the, the side or whether it's, you know, 
central or not. So tie that round there. One and two. Like that. Okay. And then what you can do is obviously just use this as a little wrap around like that. Oops. Now obviously my book page is still quite soggy from all that glue, so you know it's not the best, but there we go. Like that. So obviously there's sort of a lot to them. They're not particularly complicated, but there's a lot of stages. So I think what we'll have to do in order to actually mass make any is we're going to have to kind of just get mass making them now. And hopefully it will all make sense, you know. And if you're following along, maybe we could do the stages kind of at the same time. So that's what we're trying to ultimately get. So I'm going to put that to one side. So let's bring in some more pages. So this here is from my pink Parisian kit, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to fold the middle line and if you remember, we didn't kind of squish it. We just made our little folds where we could see roughly where the middle was. So then we're going to fold our sides up just past that middle line, like that. Oops. And then the other one, obviously, down like that. Okay? So then you've got your two pieces there sort of meeting in the middle. You're going to fold all of your corners in. So one, two, three, oops, and four. Now I'm going to do this on a repeat for a couple of other sheets of paper and then we're going to do our gluing together. So this is from my um, Precious Pups kit, which I just kind of put in my shop. So again, mark the middle, come up around about kind of the halfway mark but just over slightly same with the other side just over slightly yeah I've not never made a kit before um with kind of dogs and things so I really had a lot of fun making it I did have a request from someone asking if I could do very similar but with neutral colors I have taken that on board and I will try my best to try and do that over the next few weeks um it may take a little while to do, but yeah, I thought, oh, what a lovely idea. And um, yeah, I will see what I can come up with doing something in neutral colours. So if you're looking for neutrals, I will be doing that. So this is also a Precious Pups one. So again, just going to take it up, mark it in the middle. I mean, that marking in the middle, it seems like a sort of, you know, um, pointless, um, pointless step. But it is quite useful to, you know, to do because obviously that's how you're going to make sure that you're actually going to be able to overlap your pieces of paper. And again, do our four corners here like that. Okay. And that one. And that one. Like that. Okay. So that's those, and then I have got, I don't want to do that one. Sorry, I'm just looking, because I did print off quite a few pieces of paper. I obviously was very optimistic about how many I thought I'd get done. Or oh, let's do one on here. So this is from my country cottages, and let's do one as well. Oh, let's do one from here. And then I've also got this, which is from my bluebirds and blossoms and I've got this one as well which is from my Belgian blue so yeah we've got quite a few different different papers there for different looks so the chance are we're not going to probably get to actually finish all of these but let's see what we can what we can do what we can manage doing them sort of assembly line style you know because it's always a bit of a um uh time saver you know we can kind of obviously achieve a lot more doing it assembly line style so again, like that. Okay, and then we're going to open it back out and do our four corners, like that, okay? So what I'll do, um, you know, we can just relax into this and kind of get making, and then I'll just talk you through each different stage just once or twice. But overall, we'll just kind of relax and yeah, just assembly line style and just, you know, just have a catch up and yeah, see how everyone's doing. I hope you're all doing really well. 
Um, if you watch my channel, you'll know that I generally film these mask making videos on a Monday. I'm so sorry about last week. I do apologise. Obviously, I did put that video up. And so if you, you know, if you watch my channel and you saw that video, I do apologise. It was, yeah, the court hearing for, um, you know, for my divorce, um, for the financial part. Um, so it was our first court hearing. Unfortunately, I think my husband's going to force us to go to all three court hearings because, you know, he, you know, is not wanting to communicate or cooperate or anything else. So, you know, it's very unfortunate because, of course, it's taken up a lot of my time still um and energy and money and everything else so you know and of course it you know just causes you to be a bit distracted but yeah so that's why we didn't do it last week so and then i had lots of follow-on rubbish to be doing all week um but yeah you know hopefully well i was gonna say hopefully i'm done for a bit i'm not really done for a bit but um yeah hopefully we can we can get on with doing kind of videos and normal things a bit um you know but yeah unfortunately got kind of dates september um dates in november dates in december all sorts of follow-on dates and things for various different things so it's not looking like it's going to be resolved anytime soon which is a bit of a shame you know for the children as well because of course they're finding it very stressful and um yeah very worrying and you know it's an unsettling time but anyway you know thank you so much for everyone who commented on that video i really haven't replied to many comments on that video because obviously there were a ton of comments but please don't think that you know i wasn't reading them because i did read them and thank you so much to so many lovely ladies who shared their stories and you know i'm so sorry to any of you guys who've had to go through similar because i can honestly say it's you know pretty much the worst experience you know, worst thing I've ever gone through in my life, you know, to have your complete, well, everything you've worked for, for your whole life, just, you know, be left up to somebody else completely, you know, left up to, you know, an ex-husband who you don't communicate with and left up to a judge and things like that is, is not really great. So, yeah, and lots of you obviously empathising and kind of sharing your stories that you've been through similar. So, you know, I'm so sorry to anybody who's been through similar because it's not great at all. But never mind. Anyway, so enough going to be said about that. So we're still in the summer holidays here. And, um, yeah, tried to be, obviously, you know, still doing a few things with my daughter. Um, we, what did we do? We went to... Um, a beach a different beach to what we normally go to we went to a beach um yeah kind of a week ago had quite a nice day there me and all three children so you know both my sons and my daughter had a very fun day then um and they've got a pier at that sort of particular beach so we went on a couple a couple of um you know fairground rides as well oh went on one of those pirate ships which you know those pirate ships that kind of swing Oh, they go so high. And I mean, that was pretty brave for me, I have to say. Pushing myself right outside my comfort zone to do that. And um, yeah, <laughs> well, I won't be rushing to do it again. At first I thought, oh, it's, it's all right, actually. It's not too bad. And then of course it started, you know, going higher and higher. I was still fine. And then it goes really high for a really long time. You know, like about, probably did that about seven times. So for the first two or three, it's kind of like, oh, check me out. You know, I'm being really brave. Oh, by like the last, like, you know, five, six, seven, I was like, oh my goodness, I best not eat for a while after coming off, off of here because I might well be sick. So yeah, not going to be rushing to do one of those anytime soon. But, oh, you know, the kids like things like that, don't they? So, um, yeah, I'm not really much of one for fairground rides, it's got to be said. Definitely don't do things that go upside down. No way. Um, yeah, it's been a long time, really, since I've been on fairground rides. So, oof, won't be rushing to do them again. There we go. The weather's cooled right down here. You can probably see I've even got a cardigan on now today. So we've gone full circle, one extreme to the other. It's, well, I don't know what temperature it is actually now, but 
yeah, I went to the gym this morning and um, I went for coffee with some friends afterwards quickly before coming home. And yeah, I had to actually wear a cardigan, you know, to go for coffee. So yeah, it was noticeably colder to what it has been. Okay. So yeah, this paper is from my Country Cottages kit. And the paper I just was using is from my Bird Garden kit. So if you were wondering what the papers were. But yeah, so um, oh, I've had my paddling pool up, you know, in the garden. But I think that's probably going to come down today or tomorrow. You know, we're going to take that down because, you know, I, I don't really know as we're going to be having much good weather between you know now and the foreseeable future I think maybe the good weather's finished so here's my gorgeous daughter are you okay sweetie you're not got your eyeliner on no I've put mascara on today and I've not put my eyeliner on that I normally put on how does it look good does it or do I just look tired no. whenever I don't wear eyeliner that I normally wear when I see people they just say to me oh you look really tired today what do you think I mean, I've only just done my makeup, so it might be by, you know, by lunchtime. I will be looking really tired and uncle. Um, basically. You're just blocking the light a bit, darling. Even though my cousin, he's going to be at um, this kid's club. Yes, again. darling. Yep. Um, um, I still, I think it's once good to know my granddad's for some reason. And then if, and then I can, and then at the end of the day when he will come back, I can see him. I know you're well, I don't think we're going to be doing that. I was just telling everyone about how we went on that pirate ship. Oh, she's laughing and smiling. She obviously thought it was great fun, even though I thought it was pretty sickly. Did you like it? Yeah, I liked was Mummy quite brave to go on it? Really brave. Really brave, yeah. I was really brave. Okay. So, there we go. And to be honest, I mean, the summer holidays have flown by. So I think she's only got two weeks left. Yeah, I think it's just this week, next week, and then obviously back at school. I don't know quite which day they go back to school because sometimes they have um, inset days, you know, like sort of extra day or two off. So I need to obviously check that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, I do need to check it because it could even be that they go back to school next week because I'm just thinking, I think... I think Tuesday is the 30th. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I need to kind of double check. But yeah, it could even be that they're even back next week. And I've really miscalculated. In which case, I need to crack on and buy her some school uniform and things. So, um, yes, I must, <laughs> must investigate that before I'm way behind on everything. So, yeah. Okay. And my eldest son, he had been camping last week to North Devon. Um, I don't know how long it took to drive there, actually. He, yeah, he did tell me, but obviously they'd stopped and things a few times. So I'm not really too sure how long the actual journey took. But it's one of those journeys that, you know, depending on traffic, it could be, you know, really, really, really long in the end. Um but yeah, they went there and it was such a shame because obviously after all that heat wave, I mean, not that you'd necessarily want to be in a tent actually in a heat wave either, but yeah, after all that hot weather, they went and of course last week the weather was not very good at all. In fact, it was raining half of the week. So um, yeah, they ended up coming back kind of early, you know, cutting their, sh their trip short because it was not great weather at all. But then my younger son... He's just turned 16, so at the moment he's going through this novelty of, oh, mum, I can stay out, you know, overnight. I'm not saying without my permission, but, you know, he obviously thinks it's without my permission. So he now is making the most of that. So he suddenly came down one night, I think it was Tuesday, and he just said, oh, mum, me and my friend, we're going to an Airbnb. So <laughs> I was like, really? So they went to an Airbnb in the town where we live. It was literally like a mile down the road. So, I mean, it was so close. 
I didn't even have to drive him there. I mean, he can't drive, but he was able to walk there with his bag of, you know, clothes and stuff. So that's how close it was to our house. But he went with his friend, girl, girl. She's not his girlfriend, but she's a girl who's a friend. Um, they obviously had a brilliant time. They had a little sort of cottage um, type place, you know, obviously to themselves. And yeah, it looked like they had a lovely time. So, you know, good for him, to be honest. Good for him. I think because we'd had obviously a bit of a rubbish week and, you know, everything's obviously getting a bit horrible and things. I think everyone's just wanting to escape our lives really at the moment. So I'd like to escape our lives as well. But yeah, but yeah, they obviously, they're wanting to escape. So that's what they did, which was fun and nice. Okay, my daughter's back in here. So I apologize if you can hear that rustling. She's got a carrier bag there for some reason. I'm um, putting it on your table so I prefer really that you just weren't really painting. There's been nothing on at the cinema, so we've not done any cinema visits whatsoever. I mean, I think it's like that in the summer, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, they don't tend to bring blockbuster films out really in the summer when no one's going to be going. So yeah, that's been pretty boring. Um, Yesterday went for a really nice walk. Um, my daughter didn't come, so I just went with my friend. And uh, yeah, that was really, really nice. And then, oh, what else did we do? Nothing really, nothing at all. So yeah, it's all been a little bit, a little bit boring. Okay. Then just fold this in. Right. Put that way up looks best. So yeah, I probably am not going to get time to actually kind of complete most of these. So let me just put my glasses on and see how long I've been filming for. Oh my goodness, 37 minutes. Wow. This has flown by today. What? Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one or two with their kind of inner parts. So let's just take some more paper. Um, okay, so this is all from this this kit. So this is the um, pink Parisian. So I'm just, yeah, what I'm going to do is we can fold this in half like that and that would then be perfect size for one of the you know envelope type flaps so i'm just going to cut this down here like that okay right and then i'm just going to fold this in half like that oh and I also saw a friend of mine last week who um this is my lovely friend who we'd kind of lost contact for a few years and then I think I mentioned her a few weeks ago that we'd met up and met for a coffee and honestly we were there for like four hours but it was so nice to see her and the time just flew by we just picked up as if we'd never kind of lost contact in the first place yeah so she came around last week as well for um well she came around I think she got here at um half 11 and she didn't leave until five o'clock so we had a lot of stuff to be saying to each other so yeah obviously loads and loads of things to catch up on it's so nice isn't it when you kind of get on with someone like that and the conversation just flows and flows and flows you know and um yeah it's so nice to be back in contact to be honest it was obviously a shame that we kind of lost contact in the first place and yeah just really nice to be to be back in contact right I think I'm going to do it this way so yeah need to be a little bit careful how I fold this and things so I'm just going to glue this down okie dokie Right. 
glue that together there. So this was this is the bit that in the last one or on the last one I used the book page. So this time obviously using this um you know patterned paper. So you can see obviously you know either works just as well the patterned paper or the you know the book page. So like that. Okay. Now I do need to snip this down a bit here because it's very wide and then I'm also going to take this in and kind of round the corners and just tidy it up generally. So just going to not fold it but just bring it in a bit and then just do my roundy corners to make it look more like an envelope flap. So like that. Okay. And then just glue this in. Okay. Yeah, it's got a sort of autumnal feel about it out there at the moment, which is very weird. I don't know whether we, we've had our summer now. <laughs> it was just very brief. You know, kind of like peaked with just a few really, really, really phenomenally hot days. But it was a sort of blink and you'd miss it type of summer. I don't know. But yeah. Feeling quite autumnal out there now today, I must say. Right, I might just have to just need to this up slightly. It looked a bit wonky. Okay. And then in this side here, again I can just pop just another sheet of the pattern paper. So let's just go in here. There we go. Okay. Oops, just need to take that down slightly more. Okey I mean, it comes to the point with the summer holidays, I think, where really you can't wait for the children to go back to school just because you need to get back into some sort of routine and things. And that's kind of the point that we've got to now. You know, at first it's like, oh, fantastic. But actually it comes to the point where it's like, oh, I, I need them to be back at school so I can concentrate properly on working and, you know, doing things. Because, I mean, it's lovely having them home, but it definitely zaps your ability to concentrate, zaps up your time, obviously. And, yeah, just, well, just normal things, you know, just become sort of more difficult to do. So, yeah, I've reached that stage now where it's like, oh, roll on roll on them go back to school so that I can actually do some work and the house will be empty and you know just without all that comings and goings and the kind of um yeah just people here and you know noise around and all that kind of stuff that you know it's not all that helpful when you're trying to be getting things done so yeah are you looking forward to going back to school now sweetheart yeah she can't wait to see her friends so um yeah it does get to that point for everyone, you know, not just for me, obviously. They also a specific friend, yeah. Yeah. So again, we've got that, and then what we're going to do is pop a circle on there. And again, like here, we could have two circles like that. But actually, I'm quite liking just that one for the wraparound thing, I think, on these. But it's quite nice with just that wraparound. Now, what colour do I want to go for, like, a sort of goldy one? Or do we want to go for a pink, pink one? Mm. Oh, I don't know now. Um... <sighs> Let's have a look. Oh, the gold is quite nice, isn't it, on there? Hmm. Yeah, I really like that gold one. So let's just pop that down. So like this. There we go. Yeah, and things like food as well. You know, in the summer holidays, I just find everyone's eating rubbish. I mean, you know. Are eating rubbish in my house anyway because um 
my cookings this seems to have any cooking skills I did have they have long since long since left the building but yeah I don't know what that's about either but yeah it's even worse than normal at the moment so yeah I think things like that it will be good once they're back at school because hopefully we can start you know yeah having like a sort of routine about dinner as well like the times we eat and the food we eat and things like that so yeah it's all going to be better I think once they've gone back okay so I feel this pink twine looks pretty on here so just pop that on like that and again just wrap that around so I mean obviously the wrap around closure is not going to work if they're glued in um you know it's only really going to work if they're you know uh, paper clipped in but I mean if you glued it in yeah I mean I guess you could glue it in like that but you're not going to then be able to get to the back of the wraparound closure it would just be kind of here which you know that's okay but yeah just worth bearing that in mind I suppose so like that just going to snip this bit out so that's not in the way okay looking good so yeah love how that looks like that very cute isn't it so i'm just going to check what the time is oh gosh my glasses are so smeared up right 47 minutes so we probably should decorate one now um yeah i hope that obviously you know we've made enough sense to be able to kind of make sense of how to do the rest obviously i've got quite a lot here ready left to do now i'm not even going to put a pocket in that one but yeah i will be obviously finishing whoops finishing these ones off at some point but at least now i've got the basic um portion done so all i need to now do is add flaps for each of these so it's still been you know it's still been a kind of pro productive activity because obviously the actual making of the base or the you know the actual kind of mechanism you know that's the fiddly part so now they're done the actual flaps and things are not really going to take too too long to do so i've got three four okay whoops four five Oh dear. And then last one, six. Okay. So that's those. So six there, ready to put the flaps on, which isn't too bad going. And then I've got two that are completely complete. So yeah, let's decorate one of these ones up. So I've got some snippet rolls and some clusters and things to the side of me here. So I'm just going to see if I've got anything that might look good on one of these. Um, oh, that's quite... Hmm. Again, totally not what I thought would look good on there, but actually kind of does look quite good on there, doesn't it? Sometimes it's the things you least expect that actually can look really, you know, really good on things. Well, that's quite pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, where's my other clusters? Oh, here we go. I've got a whole bunch of them here, honestly. Right, let's see. These are just from a whole range of different projects and things that I've been doing. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. And we could even have this on, on the flap. Hmm. We think to that that's quite pretty isn't it so yeah let's just kind of have a look and see see how that would look so just going to take my blendy tool and blend that up a little bit okay. I'll just see what I've got that's kind of similar colors that I could work in to tie these bits in well that's quite pretty isn't it Are you looking at that massive spider? It's it's dead. 
Yeah, there was a huge, humongous spider in here last night. I can't tell you how huge it was. And I was just coming upstairs to go to bed and yeah, kind of like came up and then spotted it and was just like, whoa, there's no way I can go past that. So I had to get, um, you know, my son to come up and uh, stand on it. I oh, know, I'm sorry to those people who, you know, would not kill spiders, but seriously, it was a case of like him or, him or me. And it was like, well, hey, <laughs> you know, sorry but it's got to be got to be you who goes it's huge so my daughter's just spotted him because he's still on the floor his carcass is still still on the floor isn't he huge and to be honest he doesn't probably look so big now because he's obviously quite squished up you know how he's kind of like yeah gone into like a little sort of bally type thing you know he doesn't really resemble how he had looked in the first place but he was huge. You should have seen him with all his legs out and things, sweetie. He looked really massive then. Honestly, I mean, I could see his body and stuff with his, um, you know, like markings on his body. Oh, my God. Now she's brought him in. Yep, I'm putting him in. Oh, do you want that? She's just brought his body in. I've just put him in the bin now beside me. Oh, let's hope he really is dead and he's not going to now suddenly come out of the bin because, my goodness, I will be shocked. <laughs> shocked and horrified. Yeah, um, he just was so massive. I was like, wow, there's no way I want that in the house. No way, Jose. Yeah, massive, wasn't he? Right, let's just put this cluster down I had not thought to put this cluster down on the you know the flap but my goodness doesn't it look cute on there looks lovely doesn't it so yeah loving how that looks and then here just to tie like the yellows in because of course you know I didn't expect to be using kind of yellows with this this color paper but yeah to tie that in I've got kind of a yellowy looking um label here I'm just going to see whether I've got anything else that we could bring in. Oops, what's this? Or whether I maybe should bring something. Hmm. Kind of thinking maybe I need to bring something pink in onto the yellowy cluster. So instead of trying to bring yellow over to the other side, maybe try and bring something more purpley pink onto this side. What do we think there? Uh, just seeing what coloured bows I've got. Oh, as usual, it's the usual thing, isn't it? We have all these billions of things, but never the right thing. Never, ever the right thing. Mm, right. Right, right. Well, I probably would just have to go for it like this, I think. So, yeah, we'll just have to put the label and the butterfly, I think. Uh, let's just double check. Oh, right. Let's just see. Mm. That butterfly might be better still, because it's a bit more yellow. Um... Oh, I'm so sorry if you can hear that creaky floorboard. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Very creaky floorboard over there. That, that's where my daughter was just stood. Uh, thinking perhaps we need something yellowy in the background. No. Nope. Hmm, I wonder if I've got any more of that same lace. No, nope, can't see any. Got some of this little trim stuff. Mm. Not quite the right colour, is it? Um, hmm. Well, that's such a shame that I haven't got any more of this lace because I could have put some over here and that would have just, you know, brought the two things together. But, yeah, I can't seem to see any. Um, let me just see whether I've got any pink, pink butterflies or pink, pink, anything. pink anything, to be honest, to put over here. And who doesn't? Who doesn't love pink? I mean, 
Maybe this. Oh, my goodness, how gorgeous would that look? What a shame I don't have one of these in a tiny size. Because that's a bit weird having that there, isn't it? Because I just have it torn off kind of at the side. Or maybe on this side. Yeah, right, let's just tear that down. I think it may be just there. Because then that does just tie that pink in. Otherwise, the pink's kind of like, you know, a bit lost. I'm just putting pink on my finger. Are you? There we go. And then the little butterfly, which is, of course, shades of yellow. Like that. And then this one here. Okay. Like that. Oh my goodness, how gorgeous does that look? Loving it, loving it, loving it. Okay. So, totally not what I expected to do at all with that piece. Um, definitely did not see yellow coming anywhere <laughs> there. But, my goodness, doesn't it look so pretty with those colours? What do you think, darling? I love it. It's lovely, isn't it? So, yeah, really, really pretty. And really pleased that I went for, you know, not the obvious choice. So, yeah, I've got obviously another six left to, you know, to finish off. But, you know, not too bad progress, I think, because we've kind of completed one com completely. We've got another one here left to decorate and we've got six left to put flaps and things on. So, yeah, not too, too bad. So I hope that you like them and, yeah, have fun if you decide to make them. And, yeah, I will um, see you guys tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.